Okay, we're back here live at the Splunk Conference in Las Vegas, dot conference 2013. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Valley. I'm joined with Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and our next guest is CUBE alumni and uh, the famous co-founder of Cloudera, Amar Awadallah. Welcome back. Um, Thank you, it was great you to be here. You saw the future five, six years ago, now you're living it. Splunk is doing well, too. I mean, they're, they're in, the, in the sweet spot. Yep. Um, Cloudera is doing great. You got the Duke World coming up in the fall, big data New York City uh, action. Um, great to have you on. Um, so, Housley, you've been doing a lot of speaking engagements, you're doing a lot of the, um, the CTO work, uh, really with Mike now looking at the next generation of Cloudera, kind of that next journey. Mm -hmm. um, couple, couple questions right at start, start out, of the, out of the bat here. What's, what's your observations of kind of where we've come from to point, this net point now, and, and what's the next journey forward in the, in the evolution of the big data ecosystem? Yeah. You get a balance between the you know, open source community, Hadoop, and then the business side of it, which is growing very rapidly. So it's always a ratchet game. Yeah. You know, one's going here, one's going here. Um, in the middle is that equilibrium. And yeah. as you know, open source needs that balance. So give us your observation of where we've come from, where we are today, and kind of what's going forward. Yeah, so I think, I think now we are reaching the stage where maturity and enterprise readiness is just so important. And that, that includes stability, robustness, security, et cetera, et cetera. So, like some of our customers right now, they're telling us, can you please slow down, like stop innovating and stop <laughs> adding new <laughs> things to your platform and just, <laughs> ma just, just like give us a, like now focus more on the, the stability and the, the reliability and the, all of these things that enterprises need. So we're doubling down on that right now. So like recently we launched uh, Sentry, and Sentry br brings the, 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 the same security level that you have in a data warehouse and a database, brings that to the Hadoop world. Sentry lets you do role-based authentication uh, within the data that you have inside Hive or Impala, which is again, that's a must have for, for enterprises. So that's kind of what's over the next year, a lot of that focus, the rigor of how can we be uh, much more uh, reliable, much more better at doing workload management across all of these nice features that we have in our platform, and much more secure. So th that's the short term focus. So but the meat and potatoes, the, the blocking and yes. tackling for enterprise table stakes. E exactly. exactly. How about going forward in terms of new tech? Obviously, yeah. you see, I still keep innovating, a lot of smart people at Cloudera. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what's around the corner? What's that next 20 mile stair for Cloudera? Yeah, so I can't share our exact <laughs> kind of roadmap. <laughs> we're on. in that phase now where <laughs> we, we, we have to make you sign in blood before we tell you exactly what we're doing. That's uh, one file term. down. <laughs> 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 but, uh, but, 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 I mean, uh, everything we do innovation-wise and, and what we're working on, when we are working on things in our innovation labs, we're definitely working on things towards that, is enabling the future vision of having, having the single platform where you can store data of any type, whether that's relational data or machine-generated data or, or raw logs or images or emails or PDF documents and then bring multiple workloads to that data. That's what we're working towards, how to enable that across multiple data assets and multi multiple workloads. So we were at Oracle Open World last week. We had, we had uh, Mike on, and he was talking about the Oracle partnership, and yep. um, it was interesting. So I wonder if I could ask you a similar question. I yes. mean, we, we sort of see the juxtaposition of you know, Oracle, and not just Oracle, but a lot of traditional companies with scale up, you know, expensive hardware. You guys come in, you get scale out, open source, you know, Jeff Hammerbacher talks about no more containers and the like. What you just described is, is a platform that a lot of companies would, would like to have. Yes. Um, so I wonder if you could talk about that juxtaposition a, a little bit. Is yeah. that natural synergies or is there tension there? Uh, I don't mean between you and Oracle, I mean between just the, 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 the vision that you put forth of sort of an open platform, yes. you know, a lot of Hadoop you know, open source yep. versus the traditional legacy. They want to have that, that platform as well. Bringing in any type of data and bringing it onto whether it's Oracle or Teradata or EMC or whomever, yeah. you know, IBM, et cetera. Yeah, so I can't comment how the long-term uh, path is going to look like, but uh, today they are complementary today, right? Because the systems that Oracle have, for example, picking on Oracle specifically, the exit data system that Oracle has, it's really, really, really good at structured data, right? When you have relational structured data that already has been modeled, it's really good at that yeah, and can run extremely low latency queries against that. Mm -hmm. And now with the in-memory functionality that Oracle announced, they can also run in-memory transactions against that at very low latencies. Hadoop, on the other hand, is not about just structured data. Hadoop is about bringing the structured data with the unstructured data together and enabling applications on top of that. 
So they are very, very complementary uh, today. Longer term, how is that going to pan out? Th th that definitely is a very interesting question. Yeah, so um, you mentioned uh, Sentry. You guys also just announced uh, support for Apache Accumulo. Yes. So you talk about role-based security. Accumulo is you know, very well known for its cell level security. Yes. So yes. help us understand sort of the, the differences and where they complement each other. Yeah, so uh, essentially role level is in a table. We have a role. And at the granularity of that role, with Sentry can say who can access that role and what they can do with it. Accumulo does that at the cell level, meaning not just the role, not just which role, but for which row and which column within that row. So every single cell within the table can have its own tags for the security credentials of who can access that cell. Obviously very, very important for the federal government. So we, our support for Accumulo is coming from that. The federal government, uh, Accumulo was born inside of the federal government, is very heavily used inside of there. They're using it on top of uh, our platform. So it was a natural kind of thing that we would say, yes, we will support Accumulo. So it's like that AT&T commercial, you know, I, I, I got to ask you, so that what you described, it, isn't that better? I mean, so what are the trade-offs? Help us understand that. You know, you're talking about the granular level of security, the fine grain versus the sort of row level. Yes. What are the trade-offs there? So uh, that's actually a very, very good question. Uh, so we do have a uh, similar system within the Cloudera stack called HBase. And HBase actually is almost identical to Accumulo in terms of feature set. It does everything that Accumulo does, except it doesn't have the cell level security. It has uh, uh, row level only. Uh, sorry, it has uh, co column level, column level only. And actually, when yeah, I said yeah, row yeah, level yeah. earlier, I meant column level. You meant column level, yeah, right, right, column right, 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 right. Uh, which column? You just said okay. role-based. Yes. You mean column, Ro role, column level. A given role, role based meaning uh, developer level. versus yeah, 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 scientist, yeah, 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 and right. then for a given yeah. column. Okay. So, so um, HBase, on the other hand, has a lot of features that Accumulo doesn't have, like snapshots, for example, or like doing replication across data centers, is another example. Obviously, enterprise yeah, so features. That yeah. Yeah. HBase technology is mature in many, many other dimensions compared to Accumulo. Uh, we have the, a lot of extremely large deployments of HBase for real time. Uh, production workloads, not just for analytical workloads, uh, because of features that HBase has that, that Accumulo doesn't have. Uh, so that's kind of the give and take. Like Accumulo is really good, very, very good on, and deep on the security front, but it lacks on some of the other fronts. Uh, HBase is really good on these other fronts, but it lacks on the security so front. Don't and we you, support do, both. Do now. those two worlds come together eventually? I mean, about five, ten years out? I mean, it's hard to tell, I know, but. Potentially, yeah. potentially, we'll see. We'll see how that evolves over time. Right now, they are separate worlds. Like, we don't have a lot of our customers in the enterprise space using HBase asking for the role level, uh, the cell level, sorry. Yeah, except maybe the in government world. or yeah. maybe certain segments. It's really just government. Segments. Just no, government. The, other segments, the other segments, like health and finance, which yeah. are very, very security aware, aware, they come from the database world. In the, in the database world, having role level at the column level, that's good enough. Like, for, I, I can have different roles within my organization and then say which columns they can access and which columns they can't access. For example, this column has a credit card number and this column uh, uh, has a, uh, a, an, a ID number, a social security number. Only these users can access it, but other columns everybody can access. That's good enough for them, actually. So uh, mm -hmm. they are not asking for the, for the cell level thing. They're asking, give me snapshots. They are asking, give me a better way to do replication across my data centers. So that's kind of the give and take. Yeah, they want enterprise the function. Yes. Um, Amr, talk about the uh, relationship Cloudera has with Splunk. Obviously, you're here, Splunk yes. Conference. Uh, you guys have a relationship. Splunk's done very well for themselves. Coming yes. from the you know, log file, you know, slogging in the weeds, helping people as a tool. Yep. Now they're a full-blown platform. They've now morphed into a full-on value proposition for C-level analytics. Yep. They got a cloud, they have mobile. Yep. I mean, they're pumping, and they get a lot of client acquisition and a strong ecosystem here. So talk about the momentum of Splunk and the relationship Cloudera has with them. Yeah, I mean, we have several integrations with, uh, with Splunk. The most exciting one is the one they announced today, which is the Hunk, uh, the Hunk integration. Yeah. And essentially, Dave Vellante, you know, <laughs> they had a, uh, they had the, you know, the, they had the, the, the Chippendale the... guy with the Splunk headdress. You know, that's it was Dave. pretty funny. That's the, the Dave the uh, Cube uh, guy please, here. Please. <laughs> In my so dreams. The, what Splunk has, which is really uh, special, is their, their, uh, their UI. Their UI is a very, very special UI. It's very easy to learn. It's very easy to use. Uh, traditionally, it came from the search background. How can we very easily define new search patterns for the events we are trying to uh, look for in our logs. And then, and now they also added analytical capabilities as well. So how to do analysis within the data sets, we have pivot tables and so on, which is a 
So they are, they are, as you said, they are expanding into the, the BI space. Right? They are really going after the BI space at large, uh, as opposed to the log searching, searching space. A lot of data lives inside of Hadoop already. Right? And, and obviously, it was a natural extension for Splunk. Is how can we shed the light on that data that's inside of Hadoop without having to suck all of the data out of Hadoop and move it inside of Splunk? And that's really where Hunk comes in. And we love that on our side, because one of the biggest gaps for Hadoop has been skill set. Not everybody knows how to use uh, Java MapReduce or use uh, Impala or other technologies that we have to, to look at the data inside of, uh, of Hadoop. There's a very, very large number of people out there now. I, I heard almost 1,800 people, 1,200 people attending this, sorry, uh, 2,000 people attending this conference, and obviously a much more bigger yeah. user base out there that knows how to use the Splunk tool set. Now they can use it to access the data. It's a little, little liberation, too. We, Dave yeah. and I were commenting on the intro that you know, you're seeing names like Arista Networks, which makes a great box uh, that, that we all know. Palo Alto Networks is here, a lot of ecosystem oh, That's partners. on the ingest side. So on, they, the, yeah. on the a lot of ingest side, yeah. and then we had some security guys here talking about policy and compliance, where you know, Splunk is creating, enabling compliance to be done easier, which we all know is a slog and, and can, can be an inhibitor to innovation, but now you have this ability to automate. Yep. And that's really kind of a new factor in BI, this kind of real-time automation. This kind of sounds like Impala a little bit. I mean, uh, I mean real-time... Uh, how yes do you, how do you explain that, explain the differences. Yeah. So, I mean, Splunk, Splunk's foundation is about how to work with unstructured data sets, right? So with, with raw logs and with text and, and, and research was the kind of the underpinning of that. Uh, Impala is more about SQL. Impala is about squ uh, structured data that has a uh, well-defined uh, schema that on, on top of which you're using the SQL language to integrate with BI okay. tool, with traditional BI tools. So it's another way of looking at your data. It's not, I wouldn't say it's the same is thing. That, is that so I don't have to move it into exadata or um, some sort of tongue in cheek, right? Nah. But like, it's hard to predict, right, where this is going because you so, have those capabilities yes. that imply that someday the robustness of your system could start to be good enough. Well, you know, they, in well, large good enough is the right word. Yeah. So good enough is the right word and that's the same, I mean, with Oracle, when we're talking about exadata, so yes, first Impala, the analogy for, for Impala is stronger with Exadata than it is with uh, Splunk, so I agree, I agree with that, with that uh, remark. We typically would say, we would segment it as this, is Exadata is like first class in an airplane, right? It's like when you yeah. want to travel in first class in an airplane. You want right. to get there first, and you're okay paying the you highest pay price the nose, tag yep, to right. get there first. Yeah. No, not through the nose. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you pay through the nose, Come you, on. you said that, <laughs> I was <laughs> Oracle. <laughs> you're paying first class. Okay, right? he's funding the boat. That, Next year. Yeah, and, and while all of your data would love to be in first class, would love to be in first class, yeah. not all of your data deserve to be in first class. There's a lot of data that doesn't deserve to, to be in first class. We should fly in first class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I want to see the Cloud Air name on the next America's Cup. That's, that's when you know you, you know you made it when you can but get a boat But that's a good analogy. There. Okay, yeah, so yeah. it's like the first exactly. class, right? And so that means so it's instead a, of it's a pyramid, it and killing smaller it, smaller number of yeah. Use so cases. instead of archiving it, no, no, it's not saying a smaller number of, uh, of use cases. But typically, what happens today is. When my data doesn't deserve to be in first class anymore, I kick it off to archive, and it dies, and I can't query my data anymore. So you said no, no, not, not a small, but less yeah. passengers, right? Less data, less, is that fair? It's more data per byte. It's more beta data on a byte basis. There is more people that travel in economy class than travel yeah, yeah, in first yeah, class. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Just right. the value of that. Right, oh, right, so, so fewer passengers up front. Right. But the value of all of the economy class passengers could be higher in aggregate. That's to my point, right, that's yes. exactly the point I'm making. Is yes. uh, my argument would be that your model is, in theory anyway, a bigger total available market than the tip of the pyramid. Uh, we sure hope so in the long term. Yeah, I yes. mean, it's I know you've got to be careful market because you're beginning. good partners with Oracle and you don't want to yeah. say the wrong thing, but just we're, <laughs> talking, we're talking 10 years <laughs> out. I mean, nobody knows what's going to happen, but I mean, this is new. Yeah. I feel like, you know, the holy grail, you, you touched on it before, uh, of big data is, putting uh, analytics in the hands of business users. Yes. And that's what everybody's going after. Tableau, yeah, that's why Splunk, it's hunk, that the hunk, and, yeah, and, that's and, exactly right. and Hunk, right. Yeah. And so I feel like Cloudera is this big icebreaker that created this ability for the ecosystem to now create that type of, yep. of so when you were saying com competitive with, with, with Cloudera, not really. Yeah. You're oh, at yeah. the platform, well, enabling, you know, they're the underneath. infrastructure on which you're going to build all these yep. applications. Yes, uh, yes so like one of the analogies we use, sorry to, just to interject here, like another analogy we use, you can tell now I love analogy. Yeah, yeah, right? So another it. analogy we use is we, uh, we're kind of building the iPhone of big data. So that w when you take, a, ca when you take a, a picture with the iPhone, that picture is good enough. It's not a perfect picture. You can take a much better picture if you go and buy a DSLR camera 
Yeah, right. right. But you got to lug it around. But first, you have to pay <laughs> more for it. And yeah. second, the DSLR camera only takes pictures. It doesn't run other apps. We're building a, 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 a foundation that can take very decent pictures, but can do many, many other things besides taking pictures and do that at a very good price. Mm. That's kind of what we're doing for big data. The right? iPhone of the big data, it's a high end. Um, we got, we're getting hooked on time here, but I want to ask you one final parting sure. comment. Um, obviously, open source we know is near and dear to your heart. Obviously, with, with Hadoop, uh, scale out commodity hardware is based on the vision of Cloudera mm -hmm. enabling all this resource mm -hmm. to be used. Um, what does the open source community need to do to maintain the pace of innovation? Um, given that you said you, a lot of people are being asked to slow down yeah. to build the foundations for the enterprise. Yeah. At the same time, open source is still accelerating. Yeah. What is the balance uh, that the open source community needs to take care of yeah. in, the, in the software communities? Yeah, so that's the nice thing with, with, uh, with having an open source business model, uh, like we see that with Red Hat as well, is you, you have these two communities that you can appeal to at the same time. Right? You have the open source developers that really want the latest and greatest. And Red Hat, for example, they appeal to that crowd using Fedora. They have Fedora and Fedora appeals to that crowd. We appeal to that crowd with Apache Soft Foundation. Like in Apache Soft Foundation, we push all the latest and greatest bits in there. Anybody wants to grab them, they can go grab them and try them out. Right? But then on the other hand, we have our own distribution, which is CDH. And CDH has a very fixed release schedule for when the major versions come out. Every three months, we have a minor update that fixes all the security and stability uh, bugs that we encounter. And that has a very, very predictive uh, schedule, and that's where our appeals more to the enterprise users. And that's where you guys are buckling down and doubling down on, as exactly. you said earlier, exactly. on the CDH side. It's making that extremely more robust, extremely more secure, extremely more functional for the enterprise. Almer, always great to have you on theCUBE, the co-founder of Cloudera, um, really amazing. Remember when you started Cloudera, you were in the Excel partner's office, and you were yep. tongue in cheek and working on something really big. That was, I think, in 2007. Yep. Congratulations on all your success okay. and uh, the you. growth of the company. Thank you very much. We are here live, theCUBE, at the Splunk Conference, dot conference, uh, the hashtag Splunk Conference. Tweet us, we're watching Twitter. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back with our next guest inside theCUBE, extracting the signal from the noise here live in Las Vegas.